defer to our talented filmmaker of the night, Will B. Man. Thanks, Art. Oh, man, yeah, I got. Pay Don't worry, I read fast. Um, I'm gonna try and get through everything in one piece. I'm sure my friends already have an open bet on if I cry or not. Um, but usually when I try, or usually when I talk publicly, I try to do it as brief as I can, but none of you are here be for any reason besides me, really, so I'm gonna <laughs> take my damn time. Um, but first of all, thank you everyone that's here tonight. Um, the fact that this showing has sold out has completely blown my mind. I thought maybe it would be my family and maybe a few other people, but to see a few room, uh, full room is pretty intimidating, but I'm very thankful that you guys have chosen to spend a little bit of your Saturday night here. Um, so I'm really grateful for that, and thank you for the support. Um, this is the first film that I've done myself. Um, I've worked on a few projects in the past. I've worked on a short film. I've worked on um, a, a TV series that aired on Amazon Prime and a couple music videos. But this was the first one where I did the directing and the writing and because of budgetary reasons, I had to do the editing and the color grading and the visual effects and so on. But um, this was the first one where I sat down and said, all right, I'm gonna do this because I've spent my whole life worshiping and loving film. I went to school and got my graduate uh, graduated with a film production degree. My job is running a public access TV station, so I was like, I should probably make my own movie at some point. And um, so that's what this is. And um, since it's my first project, I never went the crowdfunding route because nobody wants to give money to somebody without a body of work to go, that, go off of. And um, I quickly realized that raising the budget for this movie that I wanted was not gonna happen especially with my tight schedule. So um, as the saying goes um, from art is there's people who write and direct their own movies either make a lot of money or they make no money. And I fall into the make no money category. <laughs> so I sold my PlayStation 4 and all of my games, but it's okay, Mom. I still have a Switch and Xbox and all that kind of stuff, so don't worry about it. Um, and then I drove DoorDash for a month and realized that does not pay as significantly as I hoped. <laughs> so um, I had a budget for this film, about $300 um, from what I sold and did for Door uh, DoorDash and video production stuff is not cheap. Um, even the littlest thing um, is still more than you would think. Like it's, it's stupid expensive. And that immediately was gone with three pieces of equipment that I wanted to use for this film that we're about to watch. Um, one I didn't even get to use because we didn't have the weather cooperate. So that's just been sitting in my closet in its box. Maybe the next one I can use it. Um, so that's why this film ended up being shot on a 12 year old camera that didn't even shoot in 4K, but hopefully the next project I make will be in 4K like all the cool kids do. Um, but I absolutely could not have finished this film without the hard work and the effort of the very, very small crew that we had for this film. And that starts with um, Nick that did audio, Sydney's back there and was a production assistant, Elliot was also a production assistant, did all the makeup. Um, without you guys, there, there was no way this movie could get done. Um, we couldn't have been the smallest team ever because if something could go wrong, it did go wrong, which, which is fine. I would want that to happen on my first film because it's a learning experience. But, I mean, there was a shoot day where uh, one person was sick and another person s suffered an injury, but it wasn't on my set. <laughs> I promised my sets were safe. Um, but it was just Nick and I for about 10 hours sweating because we filmed in the heat of July. And we never fell behind schedule. We got everything done that we wanted to get done filmed. But... There was just no way I could have done it by myself. So um, there were some pickup shots that I wanted that the rain ended up uh, canceling because as soon as we finished filming, of course, it decided to rain like every possible day that it could. Um, there were some composers that fell through. There were some local restaurants that ended up falling through. So we kind of had to pretty much guerrilla style film what we could uh, with permission. We did end up getting a 
great partnership out of Snowball's Hawaiian Shaved Ice, located on Maplecrest Road, where you can get your favorite snow cones and hot dogs. Um, so they came in clutch for us, but um, and we had to speed up our post-production windows because Nick is also married to my sister, who is having a baby in like two weeks. And then uh, my wife is also expecting our first child, so we kind of had to like get this thing freaking done because we were kind of <laughs> running out of time. And um, so the editing and the color grading, everything was sped along. But like, like I said, we never fell behind our schedule and got everything finished. And I just want to, everyone give a, a round of applause for the people that worked on the movie with me because I couldn't have finished it without them. Um, I also want to thank my parents and Sam, Sider, Sam Snyder Realty. Um, he couldn't make it tonight, but they both, the, the collective group, saved my tail um, from racking up credit card debt and sponsored the food for all of the shoot days. So um, not only was it hard work, but every day we filmed, we were at least fed and had stuff to drink the whole time, and that's because they sponsored those. So thank you guys for that. Um, next, I want to thank the extraordinarily talented cast. Um, when I was writing this story, of course, in my head, I played out how every scene was going to go, but um, when we hosted the auditions and then started auditioning and filming the movie itself, like every person that was involved in this movie took it to a completely different level, and I'm pretty sure most of you are all destined for way better things than my movies, so I'm pretty stoked I'll be able to be that old man yelling in a coffee shop, you were in my movie first. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, when you see them portray these characters, um, they blew my expectations away, and I think they'll blow your expectations away. Um, and I can't wait for that. So look at that, we're almost on the second page. <laughs> Uh, so when I decided I was going to make this movie back in 2022, I actually had started outlining and writing a film that was going to be an adventure film, and it was going to be feature length. And um, I do plan on going back on that someday because it's fully outlined. I already have the first act written, and it's got a title already called The Eye of Matt Anthony. So maybe look out for that. I might finish it someday. Um, but then I saw The Fablemans by Steve Spielberg, and for those who don't know, outside of my immediate friends and family, um, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas are the people I worship more than anything on this earth. Um, three of the five tattoos I have are dedicated to their movies. Um, so when I saw that movie, it left a profound impact on me, and I consumed any interview I could find after that film came out. And Steven Spielberg kept saying after his legendary career, that he was sad he waited so long to make such a personal film in the way that The Fablemans was. And that kind of made me th start thinking to myself, yeah, I think my first film, I should do a story that's super personal to me, so that way all the years I have left, I can spend on the fun stories and I don't have to kind of curtail my career with that. Um, so that's kind of how I pivoted and The Roommate came to be. And, um, it's a, it's a very personal story about a time when I was at the lowest period of my life, and um, I was battling my own Annie, who you will see in this film is not a pleasant person to be around. And I had to open up some old wounds to get myself back into that perspective, and honestly, some of it started affecting me a little bit again to get back into that mindset. Um, but in a way as well, it was also weirdly cathartic and gave me some closure that I didn't know I was searching from that period of time again. So it was kind of great that this ended up being my first one. Um, there are many people in this room that things influenced how this movie came out. There are people that ended up being there when they needed them the most. And um, we've talked many a times of how grateful I am for that. And I just remember there was one particular time where I had convinced myself everybody that was close to me hated me. And one of my friends al almost laughed, but in a way where it was like, why would you ever think that we're here for you no matter what you need? And that was really the turning point. And that's something that's going to be reflected in this film that everyone's going to see. So. Um, I hope a story that's like this is gonna end up being relatable to everyone that's watching, and I just want everyone to know, no matter what you're going through, whether you believe it or not, you're not gonna be alone. So, um, sometimes people just don't know in your corner how to ask, 
or how to help to begin with, but you'll see when it really counts, those people are gonna show up. And there are resources if you need it. You're never gonna be alone. So wrapping up before uh, we watch this film and I stop talking so that way I don't cry. Um, I just do wanna thank the Cinema Center for allowing me to have this event tonight and um, letting everyone enjoy this culmination of months of hard work together for the first time. I hope you guys all enjoy it. Um, after the film, I guess there's a Q&A seg segment if you have any questions and I will do my best to attempt to answer those. Um, but then after that's done, the event will be done. But I think there are some trailers that's gonna play and the movie's gonna, tr gonna play and then that's, that's the evening. So thank you, thank you all for coming out. I really mean it.